Hey, what is going on girls? My name is Pro, and today I'm going to be taking a look at how you can make an outro in Photoshop and incorporate that into your videos. Whilst you don't have to use Photoshop to make the thumbnails and not add them using Sony Vegas, these are the tools that I'll be using today. So the techniques from this video can be used in any other program anyway. Also, shout out for this week's video goes to Joe Phillip for suggesting today's video, and also I forgot to mention last week's suggestion for the Astro 40 review, so that was, sorry if I pronounce it incorrectly, but it's Otio Tamaidi, I think that's how you say it. So links to both of those channels will be down in the description. So why would you want an outro? Not only does it make your videos more professional, but it also keeps your viewers engaged. If you want to gain subs and retain them, keeping them interested in your videos will do just that. So you might be asking yourself how that works, which is pretty obvious, but I'll cover it anyway. When a person watches your video, they have the choice of going onto your channel and watching another one, or just to ignore your channel and move on. If people enjoyed your video, chances are they'll want to watch another one. This is where an outro comes in. Right at the end of the video, you can control what the viewer watches and also other features to make it easier for the user to go to Facebook, Twitter, as well as subscribe to your channel. Now I'm not saying that you're getting thousands of subs overnight, because that just doesn't happen by using an outro. It definitely makes it easier for the viewer if the content is placed right in front of them. This keeps them interested and allows you to build a fan base. Obviously it's hugely customizable, so you can basically do anything you can think of. So this is the outro we're going to be creating. So start by opening Photoshop or your photo editing software and start by creating a new document by going on File and then New. This should bring up a pop-up. Go to Pixels and change it to 1920x1080. I also change the resolution to 120 pixels per centimeter. What this does is it makes your image much more detailed since there are more pixels to display data in a specific space. After that, go to RGB Color and choose 8-bit. Personally, I like the background to start off transparent, so just follow that as well. When it comes to colour profile, leave that how it is and change pixel aspect ratio to square pixel. That's very important. After that, just click OK. I've also placed a ruler in so I know where the centre of the image is along with any other useful points. So to make my life easier, I've got a picture of Advanced Warfare and blurred it out using the Gaussian Blur plugin to see what it would look like as an actual outro. We'll delete this at the end but it just allows us to work easier. Since we're going to be placing in video clips onto the outro, it needs to have boxes. There's the same aspect ratio as the video. In simple terms, the thumbnail will be made smaller in order to be put onto the outro, but it will still have the same aspect ratio. So let's start by creating the boxes. Grab any colour, it really doesn't matter, and on a new layer, make it black using the paint bucket tool. Now press Ctrl T and it should allow you to resize the box by dragging the corners to make them smaller. Now make sure that you hold shift when you're doing this so that it doesn't change the aspect ratio. And once you've resized it, you can change the position to anywhere you like. I chose to do it 50 pixels away from the centre, using a ruler, and that's it. Once you've done that, press Ctrl J to duplicate it and then change the colour to something like white to make it easier. This will be the actual video though and not just the border. So press Ctrl T again and make it smaller whilst holding Shift. Now that we've done that, I'm going to apply a layer style to the black layer to give it a different look. You can create a layer style by right clicking, going to bending options and then changing some parameters. For this example, I'm going to add a gradient overlay first and then change some colours that I like. After that I'm going to add an inner glow and also a drop shadow. There's plenty of tutorials on the internet on how to achieve a layer start and you can even check out my download pack if you don't want to spend too much time on it. After that we're going to be using the white layer to get rid of the inside of the other one. So just click on the white layer, head over to the magic wand tool and select a rectangle. Then go onto the lower layer, so basically the black one, and click delete. Then you can just delete the white layer and you should end up with this. Now press Ctrl J to duplicate it and position it where you want it on the other half of the image. I recommend flipping it horizontal as well to make it look more linear. Next we'll add your name. To go onto the text tool, select a font and type a name. Once you're done, press your escape key and it should exit you right out of there. Now resize it using the method of Ctrl T which we discussed earlier and position it to your liking. It's the same for this, I'm going to add a layer style in order to make it look more interesting. So again, right click, blending options, and first I'm going to add a gradient, then stroke, drop shadow and lastly inner glow. The good thing about this is that you can customise it to your liking down to every single parameter. Ok so I'm back, and as you can see I've created the last video's header. Don't get mad though because I just basically used the same technique from the text and created a line as well. Copy those layer styles and BAM, awesomeness. At this point you can add some social media icons, but I think you get the gist of it. So now we're done. Uncheck the eye icon for the blur background, for me it was advanced warfare, and save the file. You can do this by going to file, save for web, and then make sure it's set to PNG24, as it gives the best results and allows you to have a transparent background, whereas JPEG wouldn't. You can copy these settings if you want, but there's not really anything complicated here. 
Okay, so I've opened Sony Vegas and it should work the same in any other video editor. Just to show you what I've done, where marker 1 is, is the end of the video, and anything after that is just my outro, which I'm going to blur out. So in this case, the first 5 seconds are part of the video, and markers from 1 to 2, that's going to be the length of the outro. So we'll start by inserting a new track and dragging on the outro we made in Photoshop. From there, we'll extend the layer so that it matches the length we want our outro to be. So at this stage, I also put some music in, which I've trimmed to match the length of the outro. When using music, be careful not to infringe copyright. What that means is you should only use music that you have permission to use, or royalty free, which is another great example. Okay, so this music I have, I've already made it quieter so your ears don't bleed, and right now we should have something like this. So as you can see, it doesn't blend well and there's still a lot of things to do, so a good place to start is by fading out the music and also the outro image. Also, when the outro comes on, we don't really want to hear the gameplay audio, so just go to where the outro starts and click S to split the clip. Now make sure only the audio clip of the outro bit is selected and go to the top of it and it should say 0.0, .0 decibels. Left click and drag it down. I also like to fade out the gameplay audio from the video just to make the transition a bit smoother. You can do this by going to the end of the clip and dragging inwards. So we're nearly done. Now let's make sure all the clips are faded out and we're ready to apply the video effects. Go to the second part of the gameplay and click on the video effects icon. To this we'll add Gaussian Blur. Click add and OK. And now scroll down to the top and there should be a ready made preset from Sony called Medium Blur. Select that and then close the window. Now we want to put our video thumbnails in, so start by dragging the thumbnail onto the new video track and then expanding the length so that matches the length of the outro. Once you've done that, click on the pan crop icon and make sure that lock aspect ratio and size about center are checked. Now since these thumbnails have the same aspect ratio as our video and the boxes, grab them to the corner and move it outwards. What that should do is it should make the image smaller on the actual video, so keep resizing it and moving it until it fits perfectly inside the box. This might take some time though. Since the keyframes are a random part of the video and we don't want that, select it and then press Ctrl X. Now go to the start and press Ctrl V. The location should be on the whole thing now, so just exit out of that. Now just to make it look nice, we've also faded it and ta -da! you've got one done. So once you've got this file, repeat the step for the other side of the thumbnail and however many you've got, and there you go, you're done. You can also make a preset of its location so you don't have to always enter it manually. And there you go, you've now got yourself an advanced looking outro with a really nice blur. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video and found it helpful, give it a like, and if you disliked it, give it a dislike. I know it might have been a bit confusing, so sorry, but it's the best I could explain it. If you've got any suggestions, put them down in the comments below. As always guys, this has been Proto, and I'm out. Peace.